God loves you no matter who you are. Does God love a thief? Yes. Does preacher does God love adulterer? Yes. Preacher does God love a fornicator? Yes. Preacher does God love a homosexual? Yes, he does. God does love. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. God loves you no matter who you are. It is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. God loves you no matter who you are. Does God love a thief? Yes. Does preacher does God love adulterer? Yes. Preacher does God love a fornicator? Yes. Preacher does God love a homosexual? Yes, he does. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. God loves you no matter who you are. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now let's take a look at one more verse that the Calvinists have no idea what to do with, and I have yet to hear a plausible Calvinistic explanation for said verse. Turn over to Revelation chapter 22. It reads in verse 17, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So Jack says he's not gotten a sufficient answer for Revelation 22, verse 17, so we're going to go ahead and give him another explanation. And anyone else who wants a explanation on what this passage is teaching as we rightly divide it, that we study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, so we want to rightly divide the word of truth to come up with a good explanation of what this verse is saying here. So the Spirit says, Come. The Bride says, Come. Let the one who hears come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let him drink freely of the water of life without cost. Now when the Scripture is saying the Spirit and the Bride says, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. It's talking about that there is a calling of the Spirit. That the Spirit says come and let the one who hears say come. Now this is taught in the scripture that there is a calling and that the called receive a particular individual effectual calling by the Spirit. Jesus said it this way, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one will snatch them out of his hand. I and my Father are one. So Jesus talks about how his sheep will hear his voice. He says it in another passage. I have other sheep not of this fold, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. He also said it this way. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. So Jesus talks about how his sheep will hear his voice, a definite statement that his sheep will hear his voice. And so the Apostle Paul goes on to talk about the called in the scripture, how there is a spiritual calling. Consider your own calling, brethren, that not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to flesh have been called. So I'm going to stop there because as we consider this, as we rightly divide things, and we consider that Revelation verse where it says, The Spirit says, Come, and the Bride says, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come. We realize from Scripture that not everybody is receiving the call of the Spirit, that not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. But Jesus, by the Spirit, calls his own sheep by name. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. We see this personal, individual, effectual calling in Romans 9, where it says, Though the twins not having been born, not having done any good or any evil, that God's purpose, according to his choice, would stand. So it's not of him who works, but of him who calls. It is said that the older shall serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I have loved, and Esau I have hated. So we see here in this passage that not everybody is called, that Jacob was called and Esau was not called, that according to God's purpose, according to his choice would stand, so it's not of him who works, but of him who calls. So this passage is talking about an individual, a personal, a factual calling where he calls his own sheep by name, an individual. That to him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. 
Jacob was called. So the spirit says, come, the bride says, come, and the one who hears says, come. Well, it was Jacob that heard. He received the spiritual call. And in Romans 9, the same chapter, in verse 24, it says, even us whom he called, not only among the Jews, but also among the Gentiles. So when we think about the scripture, and it says in Revelation 22, the spirit says, come, the Spirit says, come, is that something that everybody can audibly hear with their ears, that everybody just hears the call of the Spirit? See, it's saying the Spirit says, come, and let the one who hears say, come. Does everybody just hear this spiritual call? Because Jesus has given us definite statements about his sheep will hear his voice, they will follow him, he gives them eternal life, and they will never perish. But I have other sheep not of this fold, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Definite statements about how his sheep will hear his voice. Now we know he's not talking about a human audible voice. He's talking about a spiritual calling. That consider your own calling, brethren, that not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. But God has chosen the weak and the debased and the despised and the foolish things of this world and the things that are not, and that by his own doing we are in Christ Jesus. So the Spirit is saying come, but it's saying come to those that were given to Christ before the foundation of the world, as Jesus says, all the Father gives to me will come to me and the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out so Jesus says all the father gives to me will come to me they are given to Christ before they even come to him and Jesus says all that are given will come they come because they're being called my sheep hear my voice I know them and they follow me I have other sheep not of this fold they will hear my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd to him the doorkeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. These are the ones that are given him by the Father, and all the Father gives to me will come to me. They're coming because they're getting a spiritual call from Christ himself. So when we think about the Spirit and the bride says, come, and the one who hears say, come, well, all the Father gives to me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I'll by no wise cast out. They will come and they will drink freely of the water of life. See, Jesus is saying, all the Father gives to me will come to me. So the Spirit is calling. It's saying, come to the ones that are given by the Father, to the Son, and through the course of human history, they will all come to him. All the Father gives to me will come to me. They come because they're being called. Consider your own calling, brethren. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, according to the flesh, have been called. To him the doorkeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. So the scripture is explicitly telling us to consider our own calling, something these people don't want us to do, that hold to free will. They don't want us to consider our own personal calling. And the Apostle Paul tells us that he saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our own works, but because of his own purposes of grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. That he saved us and called us with a holy calling. That the Spirit says, come, and he says, come to those that he's calling. So we are supposed to consider our own calling and how he saved us and called us with a holy calling, how his sheep will hear his voice, how he calls his own sheep by name. That those he predestined, he called, those he called, he justified, those he justified, he glorified. All the actions of God that first he predestined someone, he pre decides their destination. Then he calls that person, he calls that individual to himself. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. Those he predestined he called, those he called he justified, those he justified he glorified. The Spirit says come, the Spirit is calling, the ones that have been predestined are being called, those he predestined he called, they're being called by the Spirit. So the Spirit says, come, and the, let the one who hears say, come. But remember what Jesus said when he said that no man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. That no man can come to me. No man has the ability 
to come to me on their own unless something happens. The Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise that person up at the last day. So when the Spirit says come and the bride says come, it's saying it to the ones that are being called Jesus' sheep. His sheep will hear his voice. They will follow him, which means they will come to him. And Jesus says, no man can come, that no man can come to me unless the Father sent me draws him. So no one can just come to Jesus and drink freely of the water of life unless they are called, unless they are chosen. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you. Love to the Lord. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, through belief in the truth. To this, he called you through our gospel that you might share in the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the ones that have been chosen, there's a sanctifying work of the Spirit. There's a call of the Spirit being done on them. To this, he called you through our gospel that you might share in the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. So Jack has gotten a very clear, precise, rightly divided explanation that is very clear and explicit on Jesus' teaching, along with the Apostle Paul, of the ones that are called and have been chosen for salvation. The Spirit says, Come, the Bride says, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and drink freely of the water of life without cost, that is the ones that are being called by Christ himself personally, where he calls his own sheep by name. We pointed this out to Jack time and again, how in Isaiah 43, it talks about how he calls his sons and daughters from the north, the east, the south, and the west, and says, give them up. And then he goes on to say, you are my witnesses, declare the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and understand and believe that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I alone am the Savior. So there is a spiritual calling on all the sons and daughters of God that have been given to Christ before the foundation of the world. They are being called from the east, the north, the west, the south, and he has chosen them so they know and understand and believe that he is he. So when we think about the Spirit saying, come, when the Spirit is saying, come, so will be the word that goes forth out of my mouth that shall not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. So when the Spirit says, come, when the Spirit of God is speaking forth and it's saying, come, come to me, so will be the word that goes forth out of my mouth that shall not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it, that everybody that he calls will come to him. To him the doorkeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. So to us who are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So to those who are the called, both of the Jews and of the Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, that when the Spirit gives the calling, there will be power. That word will not return empty without accomplishing what he desires and without succeeding in the matter for which he sends it. That there is the spiritual call that goes out that says, Come to me, come to me, and all the Father gives to me will come to me. They're coming because they're being called by name. To him the doorkeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. His word does not return to him empty. It accomplishes what he desires. All the Father gives to him will come to him as the Spirit gives the calling throughout the course of time in human history to the called. Consider your own calling brethren. Not many wise or noble and mighty according to the flesh have been called, but God has chosen, God has chosen, God has chosen. So Jack Smack has been corrected on this time and time again. But the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but will have itching ears. And this is what Jack is. He's a person that cannot endure sound doctrine. And there's a lot of people that he's pacifying with his own humanism and scratching their ears and giving them an alternative of what the scripture teaches to pacify humanism. 
And in doing so, we see the teaching of the scripture that they're not boasting in God, that consider your own calling brethren, not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, according to the flesh, have been called. But God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And the debased and the despised things God has chosen and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, that no man may boast before God, but by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. So when it says that no man may boast before God, it says because God has done the calling, a personal, individual, effectual calling, and God has done the choosing. God is the one that chose people that by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. So you can't boast in your own doing, in your own choices, and that's what the free will crowd is doing. They're boasting against the revelation of God's mind and his perspective on how he's revealed the nature of reality and salvation that there is a particular individual effectual calling of the Spirit, that God will accomplish all his good desires and good pleasure, that when God called me by his grace, even from my mother's womb, was well pleased to reveal his Son in me, then I might preach among the Gentiles. That's what Paul said in Galatians, and he understood that he was called by God. When God called me by his grace, to him the doorkeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. Paul understood that he was called by Jesus Christ personally, by God's grace. And so Paul the Apostle went on to teach about the called, the same that Jesus taught about, the same that's being taught about in Revelation. But it's not a universal thing for every single person on the planet. This only has to do with those that have been given to Christ by the Father before the foundation of the world that will be called and will come to him through the course of human history as they receive a calling by the Spirit. So it will be interesting to see if Jack will actually address what I've said point by point and show me how I'm actually wrong rather than just go on to some semi-related topic and then call people who hold to sovereign grace stupid, wicked, and evil and dumb and things like this. I'm going to end it here, guys. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Peace to you. Take care, and I hope your night or day is going good.